Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, me too. I was in Phoenix last weekend for the 92nd Annual Catholic Medical Association Conference. It was amazing. Hundreds of Catholic doctors, nurses, PAs, and nurse practitioners gathered from all around our country. There were outstanding talks given on the topic of courage. Now, you know, you have to be courageous to go to Phoenix in the summertime. And I will no longer complain about the hot summers here in Southern California because we have it good. Now, today's readings, like last week's, revolve around the topic of forgiveness. And I want to share something I learned recently. And at first, it may seem disconnected from this topic of forgiveness, but I think it will make sense soon enough. Hunters in certain parts of the world had developed a very simple but effective trap for monkeys. They make a hole in the ground just big enough for the monkey to fit in his hand, okay, and they will drop a fruit into it, a piece of fruit. The monkey smells it and is drawn to the, to the, to the trap. He sticks his hand in the trap and he grabs a hold of the fruit. But when he tries to pull his hand back out, he can't because his fist is too big. When the hunter starts to return with his nets, the monkey has to make a decision. He can let go of the fruit, escape, and be free. But almost always, he clings to that fruit and is captured. As humans, we see the monkey as foolish. But sometimes we too can get trapped. Sometimes inadvertently. Sometimes we can run blindly into a trap. And sometimes the traps are something that we have created ourselves. God created us to be happy both in this life and the next. You and I were meant to be free. So we need to learn to identify these traps and avoid them. Sometimes we just need to let go of what holds us trapped. The first reading from Sirach says to us that wrath and anger are hateful things, but the sinner holds tightly to them. We sometimes cling to things just like the monkey. When we hold on to anger and unforgiveness, we can block many blessings. I wanted to read something else from Sirach, which I thought was important. It says here, could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Have you ever prayed and prayed for something and it just wasn't happening? Maybe it's because you or I were holding on to something that was an obstacle to that healing, to an answer to that prayer. The Apostle Peter knows like us what it feels like to be hurt and angry. He wants to be right with God, but he doesn't want to be taken advantage of. So he asks Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? And you know, he doesn't wait for Jesus to give an answer, does he? Right away, he says, seven times? In Jewish culture, in the time of Jesus, if you asked a rabbi that question, he would usually tell you three times. You must forgive three times before you can retaliate. So Peter, he's pretty proud of himself. He thinks he's doing pretty good because he's not only doubled the three times of forgiveness, but he's added one, seven times, Lord. But what is Jesus' answer to Peter? He says, 70 times 7. In other words, our mercy and our forgiveness must know no limits like God. Jesus goes on to tell the story of a master who, owed, uh, who was owed a great debt by one of his servants. The debt was so large that there was no way the servant could pay it. So the master was about to sell the man, his family, his property to pay off that debt. But that servant fell on his knees and he pleaded and he begged the master for mercy. And moved with compassion, he let him go. 
But not only did he let him go, he forgave the entire debt, every penny. You all know what happens next. That servant finds his fellow servant who owed him just a fraction of what he owed the master. And how quickly he had forgotten the mercy that was shown to him. Well, this gets back to the master, and he summons the unforgiving servant. He basically says to him, I showed you mercy and released you from the debt you owed me. Could you not have shown the same mercy for that small debt that was owed to you? In one version of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Last Sunday, second reading, Romans 13, 8, it says, Owe no debt except the debt we have to love one another. That is the debt that we must owe, to love one another. This past Monday was 9-11, and many memorials and services reminded us of that sad and tragic day. We saw and heard time and again stories of courage and self-sacrifice, of policemen, firemen, paramedics running into those buildings. But it was also a time of grace. In the days that followed and the months that followed, we didn't see men or women. We saw our brothers and sisters. We didn't see black or white. We saw fellow human beings. We didn't see Democrat or Republican. We saw fellow Americans. And in a real way, we came to grips with our mortality and the reality of how fragile and passing life can be. And our churches were full. They were full. And I think it's because we came to realize not only as individuals, but as a nation that we need God. We need God. But today, we find ourselves becoming more divided, now more than ever. We are becoming angrier now more than ever. And God has been set aside. If ever there was a time for revival, it is now. And this revival has to begin at this table where mercy and forgiveness flow out into the world through the Eucharist, through Christ, into us. That is the message of the gospel. So this week, let's examine our own hearts. Who do we need to forgive? Who do we need to ask for forgiveness. Do I need to forgive myself? Or maybe, just maybe, I'm angry at God and I need to forgive him. God, like the master in the gospel today, has forgiven us all our debts. And we, my brothers and sisters, are called to do the same.